In this video, we're going to discuss the arrow trap behavior. All right, so I've set up a little tomb kind of area here where there's, uh, you know, something interesting there in the distance kind of glowing. We're not quite sure it is that compels us to go forward. And, you know, we're really just kind of looking around at all the neat scenery. We're not really paying attention to the fact that there's a rise right here on the floor. And there's some warning signs as well as this, there might be some danger approaching. If we look really closely, we can see that there's arrows sticking out in those alcoves there. Actually, let me just point to it there so you can see it. Now, when I step on this tr uh, this trigger, and I'm using a, a uh, action plate for this trigger, then that's going to cause the arrows to shoot out at me. Uh, now I'm going to try really hard not to get hit by them, just so you can see the arrows fly, because I think that's kind of the cool effect here. So let me just step closely and trigger ah. that oh there it goes okay so that's not too bad because it actually hit me but uh you could see the arrows flying by so there was arrows coming in both directions um and they flew out as soon as i triggered them um and that's the arrow trap behavior just for fun let's go in here because i did create kind of this you know whole room there's all this treasure and there's this glowing little skull here it doesn't really have anything to do with the arrow trap other than looks and just you know having fun decorating so uh, so let me show you the arrow trap and how that works. That's here. So here's our trigger. Now, it doesn't have to be triggered. This is kind of a, a, a nice addition that was recently added where you don't have to trigger it. I chose to trigger it in this case, um, but you don't have to. So here's the, the behavior. Behavior goes on the arrow. Now, it could be anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be this arrow. It, you know, this arrow comes with Max as a test uh, object. But you could literally, anything that you want to fly across the room uh, could be turned into a projectile using this, uh, this behavior. And we could use the trap range instead of a trigger. So in other words, if I get close to this trap, it could set it off just by, by proximity. Or if I've got it logic linked to something like this is, uh, then it's reliant on the, the trigger uh, to set it off instead. So your choice, however you want to do that. If the trap speed, which is how fast is that projectile moving? And you, you saw those arrows didn't move particularly fast, mostly because I wanted you to be able to see them. Um, but you can speed that up by just increasing that number. You don't really want to go too high because it be like super, super fast, but you know, just use your best judgment there. Trap damage. Uh, again, you don't necessarily want to go super high, especially if you're going to set the next portion to repeat because then that could kill somebody very quick unless that's your intent it really just depends but in my case each arrow is doing 50 damage that's 100 damage if both of them connect uh, then we have the trap mode the trap mode is either one shot you trigger it and it shoots and that's it or repeating which means it would continue to fire as soon as it's triggered it's just continuously fire 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 over and over and over again and it really doesn't stop so it really just, you know, again, fit your scene the way you expect you need it to be. And then uh, the hit distance has to do with the distance between the player and the object being uh, shot out, right? At what, how close does that player need to be to the object for it to register damage? That's essentially what it's asking here. So I use 60, um, 60 units to be sure that it would hit me even if I wasn't exactly aligned with the arrow. Um, so again, got to play test it. You got to work it out for yourself, depending on your scene. Uh, the reset distance has to do with how far is this object going to travel before it resets. Now, resetting on one shot just means it's going to disappear. Reshotting on uh, repeating means it, that's it. Let's suppose it, sh it fires, it goes 200 units, then it resets and it fires again, and it goes you 200 units at the speed that you've set, and then and, and so on. So, um, that could be a combination of both the the uh, trap speed and the reset distance, and dialing those two things in if you're using, especially if you're using repeat, to make sure that it's the right speed for what you're trying to set up. Uh, and then lastly, we have a sound slot. Obviously that's just the, uh, the sound when firing. So I could have had like maybe a whoosh or something like that. I chose not to do that because I already had the click. So I didn't really need uh, any additional audio for that, but you do have the option to add some sort of sound. So maybe you're shooting a uh, laser or fireball or something to that effect. 
you know, then it uh, might sound different. Uh, but that's it. That's the arrow trap behavior explained. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned anything new, please be sure to click the like button down below. It helps me out a lot. If you're new here or if you just haven't subscribed yet, would love to have you stick around. Please be sure to subscribe. And lastly, if you'd like a notification for whenever new videos are posted, just click the bell icon and that'll let you know when a new video is ready for you. Uh, but thanks so much for watching all the way through. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Hey, don't forget there's a written guide for every behavior, including ones I haven't yet uh, covered on this channel. And if you want to learn some more, why don't you check out this video next?